To show the spatial, so everyone can see their fans here. We're on YouTube Live, but we're not first. Everyone wave! Wave! Everyone wave! Here we are. Hi. We're waiting on a few more people to come. We have Jane Gordon from the University of Oregon. We're very excited to have her. We've got the Black Rose Market piece are on the way. Almost here. So we'll wait a few minutes for more songs. Everyone's doing all right. A little nervous is okay. Can not feel a little nervous? No nerves. There will be one mic that get passed around. One mic passed around. As soon as they get here, we've got an awesome video for you that Sean put together. So you have 30 seconds to get a magic trick. Okay. Everyone put their hands out like this. Okay, yeah, Sean's going to do a magic trick. Ready? Hands out, hands out. All the way out like this. Flip your hands uh, as so the palms are facing away. I'll just put some life in it. Cross your arms. Clasp them together. Go in and out like this. Done that. All the way out. All the way out. Now stick your thumbs out. Thumbs out of the bottom. And watch the thumbs pull from the bottom. Three, two, one, to the top. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, there you go. Work on that one. Work on that one for five minutes. If he does it again, you'll catch it. I bet we'll see it. Is that what did? A few more minutes for our YouTube live. Hello, hello. Thanks for tuning in here at Portland Gear Brand Camp. Sorry, Mike. All right, for our YouTube live, five minutes or so. We've got a few more people coming. Thanks for tuning in. Lots of great presentations for you. A little reorder? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, there is break, breaking news. Breaking news. There is a reorder. Reorder. First up is now. Play Fit Fun. <laughs> Number two, the soup. Number three, Society Hotel. Number four, Arcade. Number five, Black Rose Market. Hey, maybe this was all part of our master plan just to confuse you guys. It might change again. You never know. You never know. Who, uh, oh, we'll wait here till change this here, but. I will want someone to stand up and just kind of give a recap of them to our guests. So who, you have a few minutes to prepare, but who would like to stand up? Who's going to be the bright leader that wants to give just a 30 second recap about camp? Oh, don't make Think on it. You have a minute to think on it. You have a minute to think on it. And you'll stand up and you'll be the liaison if you have the people. Right now. Well, I don't see this, but we got to wait for the rest of our guests to get there. Sure. Um, on live, we've got 962. Just kidding, 30. <laughs> but that's pretty good for 3 o'clock on a Friday in traffic, because now this will live on YouTube after, so you guys can send it to everyone afterwards, and you'll have a... Thank you. Thank you. What's up? Like, like, move it. Oh, yeah. Hi, Jane. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Say, Jane, 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 Jane. Okay, let's see. You want to stand up and give a recap? Get the music on. All right, what did we do this week? To give a little recap to our lovely guests. Well, as the name's very easy, we looked into what was in creating brands. So we had presentations from Portland Gear and then from Portland Gear about what they do at Portland Gear and how they got there. We had guest speakers, and we also, of course, had a view of the brands that come in and the star brands. Now, our completely guidance space, we went to your supply and worked on your projects and challenges that you have with your business. And we worked on our presentation, making slideshows, coming up with what we're going to do. And today, we are going to present what we come up with. Thank you! Thank you. 
just want to teach next one? You, you got it? Okay. All right, so here we've got Sean's video. So every week, Sean puts together a little video, whether you guys realize he's recording or not. He puts together a recap. We'll cut the lights here. This is always a fun little moment for us to get to. Remember the week. The missile is aimed to pull you out of the crate. students had one week to work on these projects and between all of those craziness and activities and walking around it was actually probably closer to about two days full days of working on these they came up with everything you see in these presentations with little guidance they designed the things you're going to see they came up with the slides they practiced lots of times they timed themselves uh, this is all very very impressive stuff so first up come on forward team play fit fun <laughs> Everyone, stand up, and can we have you take one lap around your desk? Please say hi to the person next to you. Yeah. What up, Kaleem? Play fit fun? What up? Happy Woo! Woo! Okay, y'all can sit down. We are so excited to have you today here when we present on Play Fit Fun. Or more specifically, their corporate team-wide experience. With that, my group can take it away. Oh. So, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so you may be asking, what is Play Fit Fun? 
Playbit Fun was founded in 2013 as an after-school program. It was there to help children with their coordination skills, as well as having as much fun as possible and communicating with others. Well, today we're here to talk about their adult corporate team bonding program. And that is what we're here to talk about today. Keep going. All right, as Leslie was talking, you may have noticed the word come up a couple times. That word is play. Play comes with it, sometimes a negative connotation, one of embarrassment, one of fear, one of discomfort, especially amongst adults. Today, Play Fit Fun was founded on the idea to bring play to everyone, not just kids, to, sh to showcase the positive effects that it can bring, the bonding that it can give, and the stress relief that comes with it. So what is team building, you may ask? Team building is a concept or an idea that helps people connect and build relationships. Uh, team building can happen in many different forms. For example, you guys did a few on Tuesday that involve communication, coordination, and much more. Team building can help uh, the workplace become more efficient and fun. Oh, yeah. When we first talked with Spencer and Betty over in the back, they gave us a challenge. They want to expand our corporate team building. The way we're going to do that is to not seem like such a waste of time with the word play in it. We also want it to be taken seriously by older customers because that is their goal. Alrighty. So our team, you can go to the next slide. Alright, so our team was tasked with transforming Play Fit Fun, which is a kid's brand, into one targeted more towards adult, a corporate team bonding experience. So we spent a long time trying, trying to figure out how to do that. Originally, we started out with a sub-brand, but after hours and hours of debate, we realized what was needed was, in, was an entire and complete remodel of the, of the entire thing. So with that, we're very, very proud to present Power, Power Play. Play. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Yeah, okay. Welcome Power Play. Woo! Okay. Um, <laughs> so Power Play is our take on an adult corporate team bonding experience. This separates Play Fit Fun from Power Play. Wow, okay. Power Play. <laughs> um, so Power Play is to continue the fun message of Play Fit Fun and to continue messaging play as a positive and fun interaction experience along with the corporate world. Thank you. So why the name Power Play, you may ask? Spencer and Betsy came up with the saying, power equals play, to create a strong meaning behind the word play. The name makes the program sounds a little more professional, along with keeping the message behind the brand. We decided to make a new logo because the old one wasn't what we wanted to do, and also we wanted to be different than Play Fit Fun, which was the kids in the fall. Also, we have business cards, which had a different uh, the corporate brand building, which had a different logo. This is one we came up with, utilizing gray and gold as the new, you know, more modern, more sure to uh, to a lot, sorry, to appeal to corporate more. Nice, we also chose the hands to represent friendship and the laurel wreath to represent like sportsmanship. So the next place we look is to the website. And the current website was simply designed for kids. It's perfect for parents, but that means it kind of hides the corporate team building aspect. In fact, on the main page that you enter, you probably even had a hard time finding corporate team building. And once you click on that, you're led to this page, which has a lot of text, kind of small, and overall it's hard to read. So we thought that having this corporate team building be kind of hidden in this website is a disservice to corporate team building because instead of people going onto this website to see a more professional website designed for them, it's more designed for parents. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have some website examples, which we have some snapshots of right here. We wanted to, we took Nike, Portland Gear, Apple, and Medallia because these were sleek examples. There are websites that are very easy to maneuver, and they have categories right at the top that you can find whatever you want to get to. The BFF website has backgrounds that kind of just don't really work with the website. It lags when you scroll just a little bit, and it's just less mature than the ones we're trying to convey for brand uh, builder. Not brand builder, I'm sorry, corporate. Uh, Sean, you can click on that link. 
So this is the website that we created. So we only created in about half an hour, so it's not perfect, but it has a lot of benefits. So uh, firstly, it's a clear name, includes the logo. Next, the first thing that we wanted to highlight is how it separates itself from other brands. So when people are looking for a corporate team body, chances are they're scrolling through like dozens of different websites, so we need something that makes it stand out. And when we, as a group, were reading through your website, one thing that really stood out to us is these huge companies that were participating with Play Through Fun, like Nike Intel and OHSU. And because of this, we really wanted to highlight testimonials and these huge companies to automatically give this brand some credibility. Next, we included a shorter about a section, which is short, but still includes all the information that we really wanted to get across. Scrolling down, you can see that we included more specific aspects of the business, along with photos that went with it from the original Play the Fun website. We have a way to get in touch for people to be able to sign up for this program. And finally, we have photos that can be updated regularly with pictures of different events that happen and some familiar faces on it. <laughs> Great, so overall this is a nice website, it highlights testimonials, and it off the bat already has a more modern look by incorporating our colors of gray and gold, and by focusing less on kids and more on professionals. So we decided to come up with new rates. The rates between 200 and 400 are incredibly cheap for a large organization, and we would want to increase the prices for large because it is a, a large organization, and, sorry, excuse me, higher prices for a larger organization will legitimize the experience and boost revenue. For smaller orga organizations, we would keep the price the same. And for more specific events like this, we would keep them the same. Thanks. And we can also customize events based off of like the size of the event and the company. That way, if it's like schools, they can still have more reasonable events. Whereas with Nike, it seems like they're getting more value if they have a more expensive event than they pay for profits. Next, next we look to the Instagram, which is a key way to publicize our platform. So the current Instagram they have feels more like a personal Instagram than a professional Instagram. And when they do have like photos about their business, it's more focusing on play fit fun and less of their corporate bonding here. So because of this, we believe that they should create a completely new Instagram solely for this new business. Uh, on their Instagram, we think the main thing that they should be showing is photos of team bonding events. So happy faces, different customers, and what they're doing. That way it's informational, but it also shows people having a great time. In the descriptions, this can include testimonials, statements, and like quotes from the different brands they're including. That way you can get people's attention. And if you want to go outside of just pictures of people, you can also include like infographics or interesting facts about play. All right, so here on the screen, you can see the current PlayFit Fun Instagram. It's very personal, and that's fantastic, but it's not quite what we're going for with this corporate uh, feel that we're looking for. So as you can see on the other side here, we have a more tailored approach, where it's very focused in on a very specific, high quality, very professional level of photography of these events. We want to showcase how much fun everyone's having, how much bonding is going on, but we also want it to be very, very zoned in on a specific thing. And here is another account. This is what, a, what an actual post from PowerPlay would, could look like. And here you can see a photograph in the middle showcasing this event with a testimonial from Nike right there, along with the uh, app to, get, to further get more traffic to the accounts and to further show their collaboration with larger companies, as well as to give a better idea of what they actually do on a corporate level. Another social media platform we thought could use some improvement is Facebook. We chose Facebook because it can connect to an older audience and demographic, which is the people that are going to be doing corporate, uh, corporate team building. Some things that uh, can be posted on Facebook are such things as actual like before and after photos of the exercise or the event to show like the smiling faces. We want to have the fun and the play fit fun, but power play. Another thing you can add is the posts on schedules, which We post schedules such as this timetable to show your availability, show like you know how much consumers you have. Another example is the positive posts, which is to get the overall vibe of the uh, brand, which is power play, uh, positive and uplifting. 
All right, so currently our team doesn't have any um, money dedicated towards advertising, and we want to put some money into the budget and focus it on a rollout of Google Ads. And what this will do, it'll help put uh, PowerPlay on the very front page as soon as you search for team building activities. Along with this, it'll really help to uh, hone in on the unique uh, aspects of what makes this a special experience. We really want to show by this little mock-up here how, you know, with one look, you get exactly everything that you will um, get with the program. So we made a, a quick video for you guys to watch. Please enjoy. executive feel to it. And we really wanted to show that everyone can have fun, anyone of any age can have fun, and the bonding that comes from it, you could really see, like all of us bonded over that, and I'm pretty sure you can see that in that video. Uh, we took direct, direct inspiration, sorry, from a 2001 Nike commercial called Tag, which subverted expectations by just showing adults having fun in the public space, and we really want to carry that message over to Powerline. Um, so, what makes PowerPlay stand out from Top Golf or K1 Speed Go Karting or an escape room in downtown Portland or a photo scavenger hunt thing that I found online earlier today? I don't know. Um, so, what makes this experience so unique is it doesn't focus focus on just individual thinking and just on your own like individuality, it focuses on the team itself and it focuses on how you can work as a team to think together and communicate together and create bonds together and that's what creates the unique team building opportunity in power play and that's what we experienced on Thursday today and so, yesterday, my bad. So, we think that this could be used in many different types of advertising within your guys' marketing. Lovely. But, yeah. Cool. So in conclusion, after a lot of discussion, we decided that PowerPlay needed some new brand. It was being held back by Play Fit Fun, and it needed to be completely remodeled as something more professional. Play is already like hard to digest for corporate interests, so making it more professional means it'll be more palatable for older generations. In addition, this will allow you to truly rebrand instead of spending money on like changing your logo and just starting from the ground up. In addition, we think that if you want to truly be able to make this launch successful, you need to increase media presence on a variety of social media platforms. My group is super excited for the future of PowerPlay, and we are ready to take any questions. Great job. Feedback from the PlayFit Fun fam over here. Very impressed, you guys. You did a great job. I love this idea here. Um, you know, I was thinking when I watched it that because of a lot of the racial tension in our country, it would also be cool to make one of the hands look Caucasian and the other one's colored. You know, that might be a cool message to send to people that everybody's included. That's what focus with team building anyway. So, you guys did a great job. I love your creativity. Thank, Thank you, guys. Good job. Come on. Next up. Who is it? The soup. The soup. Head on up, guys. He's not here. We're gonna he's on the live though. They're on the live. We'll send
set it though. Is it better with the lights on? Yeah. No? Okay. Good job, guys. Also, guys, here is a clicker for you. Clicker. That will disadvantage the room. All right. Hello, everyone. We are so grateful to have been able to work with the soup this week. My name is Megan. This is Evie. We have Lorelai, Miles, Connor, and our team leader was Wookie. So we first wanted to start off with giving our interpretation of the soup's story, because we believe it is important for everyone to understand who they are. So the restaurant was open mid-pandemic and was inspired by hydroponic gardening. Their focus was mostly um, on incorporating hydroponic microgreens into their authentic Korean food and dishes. Their main ask was for a marketing campaign to increase their customer acquisition, as well as ideas to create a subscription model. But mainly we focused on building their social media presence and publicity, but we also have a few ideas um, for their subscription model later in the presentation. Um, according to digitalmarketing.org, on average, global internet users spend 16.8 hours on social media every week, which is a really great way to reach your target audience of ages 20 to 60. Posting on TikTok is a fast and simple way to reach distant areas as well. A 30 to 60 second video could increase your audience to places outside of Oregon. Um, vibrant and savory photos posted on Instagram could reach more users' attention and draw them to coming in in person. Showing the hydroponics would attract viewers because it's new, it's innovative, it's eco-friendly, and it's colorful and vibrant. Pressing a share button leads to a larger audience of people, which is a huge benefit to the restaurant. It leads in more consumers, and it helps your customers to feel more connected to you. Um, always make sure to reply back to feedback, even if it's positive or negative. It helps people feel a connection towards a business in a positive way, and forms their relationships with customers and trust. One example of how this can make a consumer feel is actually a personal story of mine. I have a small Instagram account where I post pictures of food from all over Portland, and I posted a picture of my favorite pizza place in Portland, and they actually liked and commented on my picture, and that just completely made my day. So, with that, on to the next. First, we're going to talk about photo quality and the importance of it. What do you notice about these pictures? You notice that they're very vibrant. Not only that, you notice the cleanliness of the pictures. Incorporating these types of pictures more onto their Instagram, website, and social media will have users drawn to these pictures. Seeing good images will have people reposting because of how good the images are. If they see these types of images, not only do they want to go to the restaurant and eat the food, but they would want to post these images onto the social media platforms. By having good quality pictures, it affects the business in a positive way. The phone eats first. As soon as you see this picture, it makes you feel something. It could be hunger or curiosity. It makes you want to say something. Maybe something like, it looks good and I want to go try it. You try to find ways to get there. The benefits of having these social media platforms is that the customers will be posting about the food that they're going to be eating. They are going to post about the aesthetic of the restaurant, how it's different from all these other restaurants. Toki included the status of the seating area in the restaurant. That is beneficial because if you're looking at the customer's perspective, you would like to know if you could eat there. It also shows their hours of brunch, hour, and midday. <laughs> I'm sorry, I messed up. They also have their location in their bio. We encourage the soup to do the same. By the soup posting and replying more to their comments, it will make their Instagram page gain more audience and build a better connection with their followers. The soup posting on a regular basis will remind their followers and customers about their restaurant. We also suggest that the soup should make a TikTok account. You can get attention very easily on the app. You could post story times, behind the scenes, the growth of the plants, any updates to the menu, or any additions to the restaurant. Giving your, giving your followers this type of content will make a stronger connection. So with all of this research considered, we started to come up with ways, uh, creative ways to engage with consumers. 
Uh, the first of these is creating posts for all of the menu items. Uh, this is helpful for both potential consumers and returning consumers because it allows them a chance, sort of a sneak peek into what the soup has to offer before they even step in the door. They may have no idea what the restaurant looks like or any of that, but everybody knows what avocado toast is. Everybody knows what a BLT is. They know what they're getting themselves into, and it gives them you know, a foot in the door before they even interact with the soup itself. This leads into consumer interaction through their business story. Consumers want to feel as though the brands they're interacting with are very real and very human. They want to be able to engage with them. They don't want it to be this anonymous entity that they see on social media. They want it to be a very person-to-person -person kind of interaction. And so this can be accomplished by being a part of the industry. You know, hashtags are one of the best ways to grow your name on social media, uh, starting with larger hashtags, things like food, PDX, uh, things like that, until eventually the name soup is so common, you can start tagging hashtag the soup, things like that. This also leads into posting at strategic times um, for both, again, both potential and returning consumers. Uh, if somebody, say somebody hasn't had lunch yet, uh, and they see a post around lunchtime, and they think, I haven't visited the soup in a while, or hey, that soup place looks really uh, interesting. I'm going to go check it out. Their social media is booming right now. And by keeping, okay, by keeping a routine with the posts, it's very easy for uh, social media followers to, well, follow. Uh, it helps uh, keep a schedule, almost, with viewing the progression of that business and that business's story. Um, and we're going to get more into detail about that in the next coming slides. So because keeping a routine is so important, uh, we've written up a few ideas for posts. So welcoming in the week uh, with a picture of the hydroponic plants that are growing in the restaurant um, and giving, giving the followers an update on how the plants are doing. Um, describing a menu item including an overhead shot of the food and describing the process to make it in the caption. Um, welcoming the weekend by engaging the customers. If Saturday is a game day for the Portland Timbers, make sure that everyone knows that the door is open. If there's a new batch of kimchi that's about to be sold, make sure the customer knows that. Or if there's a weekend promotion like free cold brew with an order of avocado toast, then post them. And finally, um, incentive discounts, like click the link in the bio for 10% off your first online order through our website. Here's a basic example post, oh, sorry. Here's a basic example post of something that the soup could do to increase their social media. So we have here a basic picture of one of their foods, and in the caption it would just explain what the food was, the ingredients, and it tell the consumers to come in today and get yours. It has the hours up, and it just is so, it, it's just convenient for their followers to see this and to go from there to find a restaurant. So Instagram is great because it provides free media publicity. You don't have to pay anyone for your Instagram posts. And another good way to get publicity on Instagram is to reach out to food accounts that post their favorite food from all over the area and invite them into your restaurant and have them post, use your hashtags, and tag your Instagram in the pictures. Um, and it doesn't have to be a huge account. It could also just be a regular customer or a new customer. Just ask them, hey, are you going to post about this? Use at the soup PDX. So sort of our final piece uh, with regards to this is the benefits of the subscription service that we briefly mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. Um, subscription services can provide healthy foods to people who are busy. You know, times have been uh, particularly rough in the last year, and often it can be mentally taxing or time consuming to create healthy meals and to you know find the time to do so. And sub subscriptions sort of alleviate that um, by getting people the exact materials that they need. And it allows people to consistently enjoy fresh food at their convenience. And finally, it allows 
people the opportunity to, just another opportunity to visit the restaurant itself, um, leading to more foot traffic and the potential for more sit-ups. All right, so we have a couple takeaways. Get it? Takeaway? <laughs> for proper social media marketing. The first thing is you want to have profound imagery that makes your followers feel something and want to engage with you. From you, that could come through your imagery or your captions, and from your followers, that could be reposting, commenting, or visiting your store. Eventually, you'll become a household name by being leaders of the pack and making other restaurants want to be like you. Thank you. Good job, Sue. Who's that one question for? That one year crowd of them? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Classic one year crowd. Any questions from here? Where is it located? Where is it located? It's right next to Portland Gear, literally. Right it's on like Burnside, 19th and Burnside. Yeah? Who wants to go eat the soup with us? Get some kimchi. It's really good. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's so hey, good job, guys. <laughs> next up, Society Hotel. And can I have you guys all stand on the same side so we're not passing mics back and forth? Let's do that. <laughs> Society Hotel, our neighbors. All right, hi, you guys. Team, we made the mission to incorporate more features of marketing in her brand of Archie. And one of the first ways that we decided we would do that is through some logos. So these are a couple of logos that we created potentially for our Jaden. Uh, and our goals with those logos were to make them eye catching. We wanted them to be kind of a unifying mark that reminds the consumers who they're buying from. And we wanted them to be a clean and simple representation of the business and what it represents. So these are the things we went with. The top one is kind of a website header style thing. And then this second one, the circular one, is kind of a potential stamp or Instagram profile picture. And the, I'm just going to go through the elements of these. So this font style that we picked is actually a style that Abigail created herself. It's uh, hand-drawn 3D type letters, and we thought it was a very interesting, kind of vibrant type. So we chose that to represent her logo because it's a very, it's eye-catching. It pops out. You can recognize it. And we also chose the flower theme because flowers are something that appear all over her art. She loves to draw flowers. And so we thought these two things in combination would really represent art Jaden well. 
Another way that we thought we could uh, promote the marketing of Art Jane is through product photography. And we did product photography just yesterday uh, for her, some of her apparel, some of her cards, and some of her stickers and pins. So to present her apparel, we went with a couple of different methods, the first of which was lifestyle photos. We really wanted to show what our Jaden products looked like out in the world, what people looked like wearing them, so that people could see themselves wearing her products. And the other way that we pictured her product photos is up close, so that people could see really what they were buying and what the different logos looked like. For her cards, we wanted to go with a more simple approach. We wanted backgrounds that didn't detract from the art and didn't crowd in on it too much, but presented it in a way that uh, made it really clear and supported the messages of the cards. And then for her stickers and pins, we wanted to present them in the ways that they would be used. So for instance, stickers on a water bottle or pins on a bag. And for those, we also did some detailed photos so that people could see what they were buying. Another way we created um, some online engagement for Art Jaden was to create an Instagram homepage and shop on Instagram. So um, we suggest to keep consistency in pictures of the product and share her logo as much as possible, as that is a really good way to push her product out. We also want to have her to have a clear bio that shows what she is, who she is, and where to find her products. Um, and we want to use the shop tab to um, market to a wider audience with the shortest amount of clicks, clicks to get to the product. That's one back. We also suggest that she takes advantage of her posts and the promote feature on Instagram. We think that using hashtags relevant to her, spe her specific posts and using the promote feature on at least three products to gain traction is a really good way to push them out to a wider audience. We also think tagging shop items on her Instagram is a good way so that you can click one time and get to somewhere where you can buy the item. And we think that we should make sure that her items are shown in a lot of different settings to really make them pop off the screen. So another important aspect of Instagram are stories. So we thought a general idea is to keep the energy consistent with every post in story. Sorry, in story by having a consistent aesthetic. A suggested aesthetic is like professional ads with like a hint of fun and showing the artist's perspective, like personality. For example, in the first picture, you can see how it's sort of relating to like the Portland people by relating to like bridges through her art. And a second idea is to promote the Etsy shop and website through launches on stories. For example, having like a love from the HUD launch, as you can see in the second photo. Um, other stories to promote the business are Q and A's. This just shows a new perspective of an artist with a self-owned business. And these questions can be used for Instagram lives just to learn more about Art Jaden and what it stands for, and just to know more about like the artist. And another idea is giveaways or discounts. These are already incorporated in the business, but these can be promoted through stories. One of the best things we have learned for marketing is making sure you have a clear and concise website. And the best way to do that is by whittling down your navigation bar to have it be easy to find what you're looking for. We started with like an about page that was only one page that you could easily find about the story and about her as an artist, a shop tab that would lead you either to the Etsy or to a shop that connects to the website, a portfolio showing only the best works so it doesn't get crowded up by everything she has done, a press tab that has all of her events and collabs that she has been in, and a nice tab where you can where to find all of her art and how to get in touch with her. Other helpful additions to her homepage would be her promo video, which is very cool by the way, and pictures of people that have bought her art and worn it out in the world. All right, it's me, the tall guy. Um, so, uh, so 
with the Etsy shop, just create some consistent, clear photos with each one. Down here, you can see just like some simple backgrounds, the white backgrounds really just show the photo um, with like various angles, just really get the product. That's the main feature for the Etsy. Just really show the product. You don't need any like crazy backgrounds. And just a quick little recap, uh, create a clear, concise pictures for each product. Uh, Maybe different that Instagram will have our models and different places around Portland where our gym is featured, and then the Etsy will be just the product. I uh, got create an eye-catching lo logo that anyone can recognize. This RJ logo can be plastered on Instagram, Etsy, the website, different stickers. Just really get RJ out there. Uh, make an organized website with uh, simple navigation. Uh, that that would be really great to use and use social media as a business platform, promoting each product and interact with the community on there, uh, providing behind the scenes footage, suggestions, influence uh, from the fans, just really get them involved. Thank you. Stay on. Two more. Two more. So chill, man. <laughs> All right, now you guys for the society. Um, raise your hand if you've ever stayed at a hotel before. Uh, yeah, it should be most of you. Well, um, raise your hand if that hotel you remember all the events that they did. No. All right, well, that's the problem we're trying to fix, um, and you are the society. So at the Society Hotel, their whole thing is about bringing in the community. So as a team, our objective was to implement the ideas and do just that with uh, updating merchandise, activities, display local events and talents, and more. Just to make your stay feel so much more special than if you were to go to, like, a Hilton or a Holiday Inn. As far as changing things go, we aim to move the interactive wall to another blank wall, which will help make the retail space more accessible to others. Um, this will then move the retail space, which is currently behind the front desk, um, to a more accessible area, which is where the current um, interactive wall is, and it's very accessible for guests. Uh, making the retail space accessible encourages guests to purchase items or explore local companies. The retail space would not be complete without unique and local items. Above are some ideas of possible collaborations with local Portland companies. Whether you enjoy coffee, beer, or tea, there will be something for you. Um, through this collaboration, you can create a unique blend or flavor sold exclusively at the Society Hotel and then have um, Society Hotel branding along with it. Um, the hotel also has a cafe where people can have these drinks in-house. If they enjoyed the drinks, they could buy them also at the retail sure, shop. <laughs> Other possible 
ideas of things to sell in the retail space are kits. Possible kit could consist of a mug made by a local artist, along with tea, coffee, or chai. Everyone enjoys different drinks, which is why it can be customizable, and you can choose which drink you want to go with the mug. Okay, so we wanted to create products uh, that represented the brand's aesthetic and their vision. Uh, we wanted to go with a kind of modern feel. Uh, so we uh, kept a lot of products, so we got kind of a simple t-shirt logo, and we also wanted to include the location in our products, so Portland and Benjamin. So right here we kind of have a t-shirt representing Portland, and uh, we created that landscape shirt just so people, when they came to the location, they would feel like they were a part of it and they could experience our beautiful city. Uh, another thing we wanted to do that uh, could help improve the community around the Society Hotel uh, was like a rotating artist series. So we'd have a new artist every three months. They come in, bring a brand fresh new design, and we could put that on the majority of products, and we could also have local events as well. So right here we have a design of the Society Hotel. Um, created by one of our own, and uh, it can be put on items like postcards, apparel, anything like that. Okay, so uh, we thought pins would go along well with the society's goal of connecting the guests with the local area and connecting them with other guests. We made three Portland pins that would be available for purchase in a pack in the front merchandise wall. A rose, PDX carpet pin and an organ vineyard pin. There's a three pack of pins unique to each location. The Benjamin pack includes a location picture of the gorge, a salmon Washington State pin, and an established in 1892 pin. All society employees wear one of the society logos pins along with any other pins of their choice. Guests can trade their pins with other employees and other guests, which will build connections with other one another and build a sense of community. So we figured nothing really brings a bunch of strangers together, like uh, some beautiful art, some drinks, and a little bit of competition, right? Uh, featuring local artists, art throughout the hotel, like my girl Art Jane back here, um, having communal cafeteria style seating tables, and especially fun family friendly games like Connect Board, other board games, and scavenger hunts are things that can be in incorporated uh, in either the Portland or Benjamin location to give it a sense of community. At the end of the, uh, uh, at the Benjamin location, the possibility seem endless due to this massive, beautiful space. You could do things like Giant Connect Four, that was on the last one. Uh, uh, basketball games, boating, and wine, uh, wine and beer tasting. Uh, playing these games and participating in these activities will create a human connection and a sense of community that is so important to us in society. Along with just activities, we wanted to do specific events so people can have something to look forward to while staying at the hotel. So more specific to both hotels would be game night, local artist pop-ups, and then raffle night. Uh, another, uh, the other two, movie night and basketball tournaments, would be more at Benjamin because they have a beautiful basketball court where you can set up a projector screen to make it feel like old school, and then also to play the basketball tournaments. And then with each event, there's a special event pin only if you do all these. These are some of the event pins that we would offer. The basketball would go with a tournament, popcorn with a movie night, beer and wine with beer and wine tasting. Having pins offered for attending these events would motivate the guests to go to them and meet new people. Here's an example of the pins and patches in use. The merchandise, like a tote bag and hat, will be sold with a starter pin with a starter patch or printed design already on it, and you can add your own pins or patches that you acquire to it. This creates a unique and personal look to your item, along with the community-based elements of the activities you participate in to earn them. If adding 
pins to a hat or bag is not your style, you can also add them to a pin collector book. All right, so we really like the Society Instagram, but there's a couple things that we thought we could improve. So this is an example of what uh, um, a good Instagram might look like. So one of their things that we wanted to improve was their profile photo. It was a photo of the actual sign outside the hotel, but you couldn't really tell what it was, especially on a mobile device. So we changed it to just a simple logo. That way, when you're searching for it and it pops up, you'll know right immediately that it's the hotel. Also, the bio was very long, and you actually had to click a more option to read it all. So we kind of condensed it into a shorter bio, just to make it easier to read, easier to consume, looks a lot better, keeps with the modern look. And then we added all the extra info to our uh, events highlights. Um, that way, we could post about different events, and it wouldn't crowd up our area. Also, on the events highlight or the Portland and Benjamin highlights, we could repost other people's story of the hotel, and that would also drive engagement. And another thing that we thought we needed uh, was to add a lot more hashtags on the post. Right now, we have 15,000 followers, and we're not getting as much engagement as we should. So maybe adding hashtags like hashtag society, hashtag society hotel along those lines, and also more basic ones like hashtag hotel, hashtag events. That way, it would drive more uh, traffic to our Instagram and a lot more people could see the society hotel that didn't before. Society Hotel, I think they're on the live. Jane, do you have any feedback for that as, as a neighbor of Society Hotel? Well, actually, I'm going to say something very about Vegas. So first of all, that's amazing. I am so blown away by all of you. And every time you present these presentations, like, you've done this. And this, and the, and I know how little time you have. It's amazing. So Society Hotel, I'm sure they're very appreciative. And I think your ideas are incredible. And before I stop this, we also have to be thanking Portland here. Mark is our incredible graduate. And like, it's incredible that you do this every year. I know last year we lost it. We did it last year, but this is amazing. And I want to thank Portland here and Marcus, and I know all of you want to as well. Thank you. This is, I've said it many times before, but this is the highlight of our year. So I felt like last year we just didn't have that, we didn't have the blood in our veins. And this year we've got it back. The brain is such a big part of it is to have you guys now in our fold and part of our family for years to come and the faces of our company for years to come and working for us and coming back uh, is very, very important for us. So I love this campus as much as you guys do. So thank you, Society of Bell. Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing after you know our presentations? Uh, we are the team that was tasked with helping out Black Rose Market, and if you're not familiar with them, it should be because they are not your average convenience store, corner store. They're located in the Woodlawn area on MLK, and um, if you go in, you can see Keith over there, and he'll give you a basketball to shoot the hoop in, and you can get 10% off if you make it. So to all the hoopers out there at home too, go check them out. Um, and yeah, let's get started. We were um, tasked with making them a logo and also coming up with a marketing strategy, social media strategy. And so we'll be sharing that with you today. Hope you guys like it. Uh, yeah, let's first meet our team. So we have over here Fernando Bravo, Carson Daly, Sophia Harmon, and myself, Maya Anderson. So first things first, branding, right? Branding is the first thing that your potential customer is going to see about your brand. They're going to see the image, they're going to see what you value, and to see if those values match with theirs. And that's the one thing they're going to remember about your brand, if anything. They're, they're going to remember you know, what your logo was like and what, what they saw when they walked into your store. And how do you do that? Go back to your roots. Show people how you started and tell your story. One thing that we were, we learned a lot about this week was telling a story um, here at the Portland Gear and Brand Camp, and why it's important to tell your story um, because.
people like hearing stories. They want to know who they're buying from. They want to know why they should buy from you. I know myself as a consumer, I make it an effort to purchase from brands that I know are local, that I know are you know doing more to help the community. And so telling that story is really important. Um, anything from your social media to your storefront to your customer service, that should all reflect um, a cohesive personality and tell that story. Um, and how do we do that? A great way to do that is by you know, using your social media platforms so that when someone you know, sees your logo, all they can think about is you know, Black Rose. That's Black Rose. If they hear Black Rose, they can picture the logo in their head and they know why they should buy it from you and what you do. And I know you're excited to see the logo, so let's get started um, with that. This was our thought process, and Sophia's going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so this is kind of where we started. That top one with the hand right there is our very first design. It was pretty detailed. And then we have some more geometrical ones and some more abstract ones. We really like the black rose symbolism and how it represents new beginnings and like key changes in life. Um, so then we went with the color scheme, and we chose the red that you already have on your sign right now, and then black, gray, and white as some basic accent colors. Um, so these are just some abbreviations that we wanted to add to connect with MLK, which is the street that you are on right now. So we did MKT for market, LQR for the living store, and then you mentioned having potentially a bar open up, so we added that as well. So for the first logo we created is this Woo! one. Uh, we created a geometrical shape. Which <laughs> Um, we did a more bold and like classic font at the top and over there, and then we had a more geometrical rose with, um, we did the black and the white to kind of show unity, and um, then we had the hand at the bottom to kind of like show holding it, like uh, community and stuff like that. So, and then the next one we showed was a little more simple um, and modern, so we went with a more modern kind of Fawn, and then we were a uh, more rounded rose, so going away from the geometrical shapes, and then we went up with a thorn and a leaf on it, which is um, all the shapes come from the rose inside. Uh, so we kind of wanted to give you two options to go with your style. They can both get bigger or smaller, and then they can be in black and white. And so you mentioned yesterday that you want to put the logo on the side of next, right next to the mural, so we kind of showed you this could be an example if you went with this logo. So now that we have like an idea of what your brand and what it's going to look like, um, we have we came up with some marketing stuff um, for you to, you know, go on. And so, what's your mission, right? What do you want your store to be about? This is a store that provides customers with the most pleasant and unique, convenient shopping experience. And your vision, you know, who do you want to be in the next five years? You guys want to be the premier brand convenience store or brand of stores in the greater Portland area. That's Black Rose Market, Black Rose Booker, you know, Black Rose Bar. That's who you want to be. And so we also came up with some goals to help you achieve that mission and um, get to that vision. So your goals that we think are very uh, attainable are establish a Google presence and increase your searches by 10%. We did notice that when we looked up convenience store near me near, in your area, or when we even when we Googled Black Rose Market, we couldn't find you. Um, but we'll talk more about that. Fernando has something for you on that. We also think that you should establish your online presence and continue to increase engagement on your social media platforms, and of course, improve daily foot traffic into the store. So now Fernando is going to talk to you about Google presence. All right, so sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So Keith, we took the initiative of actually registering your store. Uh, the, notif the postcard's on its way for you to verify it. We'll give you all the account information. Pretty much all it was was setting it up online with Google. So we'll give you the login info and the password if you want to change it or cancel it if you have different plans. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much for your store to be able to be relevant when someone searches a convenience store on Google Maps or a store near me, liquor store in the future, you know, that's going to be up to you and your wife. Uh, so you can, uh, you can add to this the business hours, you can engage with your customers and Google reviews, and you can encourage them as well to leave reviews every time that they shop at the store. Uh, in addition to this, we also have a couple promotion ideas that you guys can implement to attract customers and to retain current customers. Uh, the first one is the loyalty program with your Clo Clover POS system. If you follow these four simple steps, you guys can actually set up a way for your customers to get rewarded, either through the counter or they can download the app. And basically, you designate a certain percentage of each sale uh, that can convert into points. From the points that then the, those points can convert into a tangible product, whether it's a snack, a free drink, or something like that. Kind of like the 7-Eleven apps or any other rewards programs. 
Uh, in addition, we also have a punch card sample, which is we wrote one three three not us, non alcoholic of course, because it is. And um, Black Rose Market, you guys can decide the validation date. These are things that we're offering to you. Uh, all the login information we're going to give it to you after the presentation. So it's not just samples, but it's there are tangible things that you can go ahead and edit after the presentation. Uh, so everything about Black Rose is basically a story. Everything tells a story from your brand to your store. Uh, within these stores, we found that the three main things that you highlight are local products, minority-owned products, and women-owned products. We noticed that there was a, when you walk into the store, they're pretty much like scattered all over the place because of some have to be in the fridge, obviously some have to be on the shelf. We would recommend that you try to condense all the products within sections in the store so that customers are able to see and basically see walk in the store and say, oh, here are the locally owned products, or here are all the locally owned beers, things like that. That will help you, help your customers learn more than anything, experience that story that you're trying to convey. And lastly, in addition to the product placements, we also have a small template here that you guys can use to do product labels. Customers can basically scan the QR code and they can find more, learn more about the story behind their brand, uh, what they're trying to promote, as well as their product. And you can also use that same system to promote your Instagram account. So through a flyer, you can print this through Canva.com. Yeah. All right, so moving on to the social media strategy. Um, we're recommending that you guys are active on Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. And with Instagram, it's incredibly important that you have a short handle, such as Black Rose MKT or Black Rose PDX. And then also we have some suggestions for your content, which we'll get into in a second. And then for Facebook, it's also very important that you're active on your Facebook page and then joining and engaging in community groups, such as a neighborhood group. And then for Snapchat, you can create a geo filter which encourages customers to engage and promote your store while also engaging the community through the URL. And then these are just two examples of how we reached out to two potential handles, um, Black Rose Market and then Black Rose. However, we also did already say Black Rose MKT and we have all that information and that will be in that drive as well. And then for Instagram, the profile picture is really important and it needs to be simple and easy to identify and the usage of the logo is also important as it will tie the branding all together. And in the bio, we really love the tagline that you guys have. However, we're suggesting that you remove the website until it's actually up and running. And then also switch to a business account for professionalism. And then also to curate ads and data so you can tell which posts are successful and which ones aren't working. And then post, obviously, product images for both convenience items and new drinks. However, it's also really important to um, emphasize that there's consistency in the formatting and branding throughout all social media platforms. And then for Instagram stories, you can utilize these to showcase the new products rather than having to post a new post every time there's a new one. And then also posting daily current offers, community members, or your favorite products. And then also use it to actively engage with the community through polls or the great incentives like you mentioned. And then you guys also do have highlights. However, we're suggesting that you add like a tour of the store or new products and then different promotions. And then here are just some mock-ups. So on the left, we have some simple images that you could do for your Instagram, like just your post. And then the middle and the right are both just story examples for new products or promotions that are happening in the store. Um, so these are two t-shirt examples that we made for merchandise that you could sell in your store. We made a black and a white one with the simple rows on it and then the corner market outlined on the back of them. And then we also made some coasters and koozies as well for like drinks that you sell or anything like that. And last but certainly not least, community engagement. Um, so what we've seen like from the beginning when you guys presented us on, to us on Monday is that you want to be part of the community. You know, you want to be that store that all the kids go into after school, buy snacks, you know, come in and they know who you are. Um, and I think yesterday when we went into the store and we, you know, witnessed you, you were really great with that. You came in and everyone that came in, you're like, hey, what's up? You know, how can I help you? Which is really great for your customer service and really great um, to add to your brand. So we just want to make sure that you know you continue to do that. Um, I think one of the, the another great, great thing was the report cards. You know, kids can come in, bring in their report cards, show you their grades, and if they have a good one, they get a free snack. 
and that really helps with the youth in the community and you know the, those kids are going to be kids that end up growing up you know attending that store going to that store um so other ways that we thought you can engage in the community is maybe you know products that are not no longer being able to be sold at the store you can have them be donated into a community pantry where you um you know collaborate with other businesses in that area to unite all the businesses and you know build your community up um, so we're really excited to see, you know, how you guys continue to do that and, um, you know, just ensure that all your employees also keep that same energy that you have in the store and ensure that, you know, that's a cohesive brand image um, as you further go further and as you expand. So thank you. We hope you enjoy. That's about a, about a $10,000 reprint you guys did. <laughs> nice work. What's your feedback for your lovely team? That was wonderful, you guys. I, I am blown away. I, that's a lot. <laughs> and thank you so much. I don't know how you did all that in that little bit of time. Marcus, good job of picking everybody to do this. All these presentations were wonderful. Um, I have to take all that in before I have to speak. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot, but I'm really excited about that. Um, everything's going to be on the drive, it sounds like. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's everything we need. These guys are so prepared. Perfect. And then I'll give you all my Instagram logins and everything. You guys can see. <laughs> <laughs> the That's great. Good job, Black Rose Market. Thank you guys. Well, unfortunately, everyone, that is the conclusion of camp. You guys want to go another week? Yeah. yeah. Next week, Monday morning? Yeah. I wish. Well, thank you guys so much. That was such a fun week. We love doing it. We hope again you guys stay part of what we're doing. You guys are a special, special group. I hope this was a fun event for you guys to have coming out of a rough year last year. You guys all hung in there. You did it. You guys are shining stars, not only for the city, but for this world. Please keep being good people and just be a good story. That's all we ask. Be a good story for this world. So thank you guys. Hang out. Give hugs if that's allowed. Get phone numbers. And uh, we appreciate it. Thank you guys. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do it like I'm not going to be 